Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and to part three of building this shop. So let's make a start. So the reason behind me watching this video is uh, I wanted to see what goes on behind the, the shop counter as it were and uh, the things I'm interested in is the table here and I don't know if you noticed but there's like an old oven in the background there with the copper hood so I might include that into the shop thing I'm interested in here is this machine what it's going to do now is going to put that right, through there After watching that video, um, I have made a list of the items I want to put into the back room, which are the table that we saw with the sweets, and if I can make it, probably the rolling machine, um, some shelving, definitely the hook on the wall, uh, the cooking hood, and the and a sink because there would have been a sink for washing up those um, heavy duty cooking pots so we haven't really got a lot of space in there it measures 35 millimeters that way and 98 millimeters that way so yeah so if I get put the table there the sink in that corner and some shelves and some of the little bits and pieces I think that'll soon fill up that room now that table was huge if you noticed because there was like lots of area where you could make dozens of different types of sweets all at once so you could have two people working on that table quite easily I'd imagine so this is how we left the building and I have painted, now painted the windows. So what I'll do next is I'll put the bricks on and then that'll finish that off. And then I'll glaze the inside and then we can concentrate on the inside. So the first thing I've got to do on this list of um, details is the range. The old Victorian range. Now in the video you couldn't quite see this properly. Um, so what, I, what I've done is I've gone on the internet and looked at Victorian ranges and they're mostly like this where you've got a little fire in the middle here which heats up the ovens either side and the centre ring so obviously that would always be the, the hot plate as it were um, so I've got a basic idea of what I'm trying to do so Here's our chimney breast and here's our little tiny bits and pieces for the range. Um, we have the base, we have the 
ovens either side all I've done here is I've just stuck some card together and wrapped some paper around it and then trimmed it to the right size um, getting the sizes was a little bit difficult but I think I've managed it so it's just a case of gluing all these little bits together because I've got the base I've got the top and they've all got to be glued to the chimney breast before I glue it to the center wall so let's make a start so as you can see I've glued the base on and the idea of having that center line going all the way down to the base helps me out and because I've got to put in the middle bit first for the the fire as it were and if that's smack in the middle then I can get the ovens either side or less spot on so he says so we'll just keep on gluing all these little bits together So as you can see we've got some sort of cooker going on there. Just glue on the top. Squash it all down, make sure that it's good and flat. Make sure that that bit's square. Right, and there we have our Victorian range. I don't know if you can. There we go. So we have now added some side walls, um, which is which you saw in the video. So the next thing I want to try and do is is add the copper hood as it were and uh, I've had a few goes at it as you can see uh, on the on the bench there but this one seems to be the one that works well so all I've done there is cut a piece of thin card and the two lines represent the width of the cooker and I've had a chamfer that much back at least two and a half millimeters to get the angle right as you'll see so this now should sit in between those two walls and uh, now we have a hood and then once the other layer of the chimney comes down it will hide that gap that we have in there so I'll glue these bits together and then uh, We'll see. So we've moved on a little bit now and I've uh, finished off the range as it were. As you can see, uh, try to get as much detail into this little oven as best as I could. Um, we have the copper hood, which has turned out okay, but I might have to give that another coat of paint. Um, but apart from that, this is almost ready to go into the building. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm quite happy with the way that this has turned out. So all I've got to do now is just touch up where the ink is bleeding through the paint. And then this is ready to glue in. So as you can see, I've uh, added the centre wall, as it were, with the range on into the building, which virtually splits the building in half. So. What I'm about to do now is to add the back scene, as it were, that I had downloaded off the internet on the last video. You had seen what looks like an interior of a shop with all the goodies. So what I'm doing now is just PV in the walls. And then I'll just glue that 
back seam or back drop onto the shop wall to give the impression that we've got loads of sweets in the shop. So I'm not going to stick it on straight away, I'm just going to let this glue dry out a little bit just in case the paper decides to bubble on me. So it's best to do this when the PVA is gone and going off a little bit. I'm just trying to get in every little nook and cranny as it were to make sure that it goes in where I want it to go. Now I've already measured and cut the piece to go round the door and uh, hopefully it should fit in there nicely so we'll just leave that to dry a little bit and uh, as you can see here I have already cut it out and waiting to go I know there's a door here but what I've done is the bit that I've cut out of there I'm going to glue onto there so that will hide that door and basically it fits in perfectly you can't hardly notice it so I'll do that first so I'm just going to cover up that door that's in the original picture by the using the cutout for the door that I've got in the shop and then hopefully it'll just hide that door because we can't have a door in the middle where the chimney is so I'll just put that there and that just blends in nicely you'd never know camouflaging up the old door right I think that's been long enough now so we shall give this a go what we'll do we'll just fold these in and make sure we get the back bit in first this is a uh, going to be very very tricky Only got one shot at this. Still damp enough to pull it back. in the corners Nearly smashed all them jars. Ah, that looks quite good, that. So with the front on and that um, back scene in the shop, it really gives the shop some depth. Um, with all those sweets, in. it'll look uh, quite good when it's lit up. And uh, that's something we'll get onto later. So. Let's go back into this room. So you remember the hook on the wall uh, where that guy was stretching the um, the boiled sweet mix? So I've made that. I've left 
it long so I can trim it. And I've left this card long so I can trim it because at the moment it's just too small to handle. So what I'll do is I'll wait till the super glue goes off and then paint that black. And then uh, we can trim it and then stick it on the wall. So here's a list of all the items I wanted to put into the kitchen. Uh, a table with sweets, shelves, um, hook on the wall, the sink and the rolling machine. Now, out of all these, which one do you think I've had the most trouble with? Yep, the rolling machine that makes the sweets. I've had two attempts at it. This one here, if you put the, the little fella beside it, it's way, way, way too big. That's more like uh, O scale, I think, probably. And then, if you look on the table here, I have made another one. And I think that's just about right. Just make it out. Now, that's all made out of plastic card, except the little handle there. I don't know if you can see that. Get you into focus. There you go. The little handle is made out of copper wire. And then we have the kitchen sink. And you see copper wire again for the tap. Now the basin itself is one of these off the old three pin plug protectors. All I did is chop that end off. And if you look underneath there you can actually see the hole possibly underneath there. You can see the hole which would have been the plug hole. So that's the kitchen sink. And the last but not least is the shelves. And I've had a and I've painted them all already and I've put some tins on there or some some pots or on the shelves. This was the easiest to do. Um, it's just card, uh, two mil card, and one mil card for the top, and then just ordinary card that's left over from the the bricks, and just painted brown. So all I've got to do now is paint all these items and put them in the kitchen. Um, the table. The main table, it's quite a big chunky table, I've made that out of plastic card as well. So as you can see I've uh, finished painting all the furniture now. So this is the table with the um, sweet maker machine, you turn the handle, well you saw it in the video and we have some rhubarb and custard treats there waiting to be broken up to turn into sweets. And uh, so that's that done. Uh, the sink now has been painted, so that's waiting to be fitted as well. But it's a bit uh, damp at the minute, so while waiting for those to dry, I thought I'd make a start on the counter. So I've folded up a bit of card and I've folded up a bit of this clear plastic as well to make one of those counters that, that um, slope at the front. Um, then I can put a shelf in there with some uh, sweets on. So I just thought I'd uh, show you that. It's not glued yet, all it is is folded to fit the counter. Now this counter is 60 millimeters long. Now that's 5 millimeters high. That's 12 millimeters high. So once that goes in there, we can then paint that and then add some shelves. I have now finished the counter and as you can see I've added a little tiny till on top of the counter there. As you can see it's got two digits already popped up there from the last thing that was sold. Um, if you look closely inside there's three packers and that's for a shelf to go in there. If I just turn it around, you can see the other side of the till. It is really, really tiny. And all I did there was glue three pieces of card together. Two mil card, that is. 
which gives you a height of 6mm and I've just cut the width of about 5mm and I've just cut a little bit out and once that bit was cut out I covered the whole lot in super glue which stops it then from coming apart and I just left it to dry and once it's dried I stuck it on the counter and then painted it so now we have a till for the shop now I never did this for the refreshments room or the news agents so this is the first shop to have a till right getting back to the shelf here we have a shelf and it's got some silver trays on it and that's going to be slid into the counter and what I'm planning to do here is um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with diamond paint now these little tiny discs are roughly a mil and a half in diameter and there's red ones, pink ones, grey ones uh, a couple of different colour brown ones in there so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick these onto the trays and it looks like sweets then and this is how fiddly um, diamond painting is um, normally you'd be sticking these little beads onto a picture but uh, I'm going to try and represent some sort of sweets here so I just need a little bit of super glue which I'll smear on a bit of card then I'll pick up one of these little tiny beads dip it into the super glue and then put them on the tray and hopefully it'll stick I might need a little help to get it off of the holder but there you go and that's what I am trying to achieve and it just looks like some sort of sweets or something like that, some sort of candy um, if you're interested in diamond painting I think you should check it out um, it's brilliant for the ladies but uh, I think for me I'm glad I don't do this stuff it's just too fiddly And now I've placed the shelf back into the counter and uh, got a good little scene going on here we got Mrs T loading up the counter there with some sort of ice buns all different flavours and yeah I think that's all I'm going to do for the shop front so let's have a look at the kitchen so as you can see in the kitchen area I've placed all the items that I wanted to pick out from the video that we saw earlier so we have the table, the hook on the wall the range, set of shelves and the kitchen sink oh and don't forget the um, boiled sweets machine as well I've just added a, a little clock on the wall there. So um, I think that's as far as I can go for now because I'm waiting for some figures to go into the kitchen area there. So I think uh, I can concentrate on the backyard. In front of you we have all the bits and pieces required to make the outbuildings for the backyard we have a storage building which is just uh, a right angle on the card which is going to go there we have the outside lavvy which is just these two pieces here so that's the framework to go around the door and that's just a side wall which is going to go on this wall here and then we have the three doors uh, one of them for the storeroom the other one for the lavvy and that's going to be the main gate on the yard as it were 
So the next stage is to cover all this lot in card. As you can see I'm slowly getting all my little bits and pieces together. I've got the two side walls, I've got uh, various doors and the outdoor lavatory that's virtually complete. So all I'm doing now is the outdoor stores. I'm just painting the window red to match the doors. And uh, then I'm almost ready to put all this lot together. Right, we're just about ready to put all this together, so I just want to do a dry run to make sure that all the joints fit perfectly. Because uh, at this late stage of the game, it's still you've still got a chance to um, make sure that they still fit. So I'm going to start with the two outside walls first. So I'm just going to put this one in first. So it's flush with the outside and flush with the yard base. And then we fit the other wall just to make sure again you flush with the outside and you flush with the base. Now for the rear wall. Just use on the old quick adhesive for this. You know that the walls fit. Off the camera they've been together quite a few times. What I've done with the back wall here is I've offset to give us more room inside the yard by gluing it to the outside edge. Flush with the bottom and flush with the sides. Okay. So the last two buildings to go in is the little warehouse building and the um, Outside loo, so I'm just going to put these in. This one goes there. Hopefully, you should just line up with that little piece there, and that should line up with that there. So that's that one in, you just about make it out. It is a very small yard, as you can see. And the glazing's in as well, so I'll put a little bit of glazing in there. So that's that one done. Now the little outdoor lure, I don't know if you noticed, but I have been using fine scale track pins for the doorknobs on all the buildings. And that I've done, so that should just sit in there nicely. So I will glue that one in. And what I'll do with these is I'll just put a concrete roof on both of these. So that'll just be a little piece of card. Just makes it a little bit easier. 
and that will just go in that corner there. Square it up, both walls. So that's the, the yard done. Now that I've added the concrete roofs, you think think um, that would finish it off, but I think there's something missing. Yep, you guessed it. It's one of these. A coal bunker. So here is the kit I have made for the coal bunker. Um, we have a base, we have a front and a back and two sides. I haven't done the top yet. Um, the reason I haven't done the top yet, I want to make sure that when all this goes together I can make the top separately. So basically what I've done with the front is I've scored it with a pen to create a box like if I don't know if you can see that. There you go, if I come back a bit. There. And as you can see, I've added a tiny strip of 1mm card. Now that box is 4.5mm by 4mm up, and then a little bit of card to go across the top. So the next thing I want to do is just glue all these bits around the base because the base fits inside. Right, so that's the bunker done. All I've got to do now is cut a piece of card to form the lid. So Right, so what we want to do now, when we've got our basic top, six million, six million, draw a line, and then score it six mil, six mil. And what we'll do, we'll just score a line across. just to allow for a fold. Now what we do then, just get a pen, and just run it along that edge where we just scored. And just mark every other millimetre. Because the lid will be a wooden lid, no doubt. So I'll just score half of the lid or top with lats. Fold it now. And then glue it on. So if you're wondering about the scale of the bunker, if you look at it, there's just about chest height. Which is about right. And here's the bunker finished. Um, as you can see, I've weathered it very, very slightly. I think what I'll do is I'll just go over with a bit of uh, black powder to finish off. And then we'll just stick this in the yard. And now we've added the coal bunker to the backyard. And uh, to be honest, I think that's all I can get in the backyard. That was a tight squeeze fitting that in there. And as you can see, there's a little bit of 
coal being spilled out. Right, so it's been a, a busy week this week. Um, with the kitchen coming along, um, I don't think there's much more to add in there. I might throw in another figure. Um, there's the sink and whatever, I think you've seen this already. But yeah, it's coming along. So hopefully next week we can start um, with the roof and fitting the LEDs. Um, the front is not glued on yet because there's still one or two little tiny details I want to add inside the shop front. I don't know if I can get much more in there but uh, I want to add some more little details in there. Some sweet pots or something on those little two shelves. So yeah, it's been fun this week and we've cracked on a bit as well. So, thanks for watching now. And we'll see you again next week. Hopefully with it finished. Maybe. Bye for now everybody. Catch you again next time. Bye.